What's up, everybody? This episode of the podcast is brought to you by We Print Wraps. We Print Wraps is the wrap industry's number one source for wholesale printed wraps. They offer free nationwide shipping all across the U.S. and Canada. Go to WePrintWraps.com today. Okay, folks, welcome to the All Wrapped Up podcast. If you're new to the show, I've been a weekly listener. Thank you for tuning in and supporting the show. As you know, I don't ask for much, but I appreciate it if you left your feedback and a five-star rating on any platform that you're listening to. It really helps us out in getting the word out about the industry. And don't forget, if you find value in the content, subscribe and tell a friend. And now here's a brand new episode of All Wrapped Up With Anthony Fisher from Tailored Auto Styling. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to All Wrapped Up Podcast. We'll be interviewing industry-leading rap companies to share tips, tricks, stories, and more. Not too much, man. How you doing today? Fucking living the dream up here in New England, bro. That's good to hear. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> how's, <laughs> how's your weather over there in uh, o- Oregon, right? Oregon? How do you, yeah, how do you pronounce it? Oregon, Oregon. It just <laughs> depends on which side of the, the country you're on. <laughs> <honestly>. <laughs> uh, no, the, the weather is pretty good over here. It's surprisingly, right now it's uh, it's not super wet yet. I mean, we've had some rain, but today was nice. It was it was sunny for most of the day, cold as hell in the warehouse, but other than that, it was, it was pretty pretty decent outside, so I couldn't complain. Nice, dude. Nice. Yeah. I love I love hearing nice weather in other places because it makes me warm inside here, being 25 degrees, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Well, dude, let's, let's definitely get into it, bro. Like, typically, I like to start off... Um, by asking you what you got going on this week at the shop, can you let us in? Yeah, so uh, this week we uh, we got a couple little just small projects. Uh, the warehouse we're in has a bunch of other businesses around, so I've got a couple of their little jobs here and there. Um, got a full wrap sitting here waiting for material to get fully printed. A uh, customer brought me some chinese crap material i was not fond of and i was like no this isn't gonna work (laughs) not unless you don't want a quality job and he's like yeah no i want a quality job so took the design and print it or we're printing it now so just trying to get that all dialed ready to go back onto the car finally nice Um, nice what do you uh what do you what do you do with your printing stuff do you have a printer in house that you print or no we're actually uh Cost of overhead trying to hold one of those things in the shop is ridiculous. So mm. I'm doing everything outsourcing right now. There's another local company. They're just a sign shop, and that's all they specialize in. It's just signs and printing and whatnot. Nice. And then we do all the wrapping. So we, like, kind of correlate really well together. Like, oh, we need a sign. Here you go. Can you print it for us? Or, oh, we need something wrapped. Can you guys come wrap it for us? And I'm like, sure, no problem. So One hand washes the out. other. Yeah, exactly. That's definitely what yeah. it's all about. So, what do you? So, what are you doing with this? Just like a, a like a a printed livery design, or are you doing? Is it like a commercial type of job? Or? It, it's going to be a basically a full commercial car. So it's a it's an Audi TL mm-hmm. and it's black, and we're putting on uh, it's a digital like camo okay design. Um, it's like grays and blacks. So it works out really well being a black car already. So I'll just shoot it all commercial instead of trying to go all crazy with it and whatnot. Definitely. Um, but it, it makes it difficult trying to take the door handles out and close the doors because the way the door handles come apart, uh, you can't really shut the door without being able to not open it back up. Yeah. You got to roll. So you got to like, keep the window yeah. down. Yeah. You got to keep the window down. And then, like, even if you try to latch it, you couldn't unlock it from the inside because you took the whole mechanism apart from inside. So, like, your inside handle and your outside handle are nowhere to be found anymore once you pulled that outside handle off. No shit. So, I'm like, yep, never mind. I guess we're going to leave the door handles on and try to wrap around them. 
and do the door cup separate. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, do, do them as a se- their own separate piece. Yeah, and that sucks yeah, because exactly. then you got to line up the graphic with the rest of the yeah. door. So it's it's bittersweet. I mean, it's it's gonna suck, but the, <laughs> the customer knows all about it. I've you know made sure I've stuck on my communication with him, so he's on the same page as I am. There you go. Like this beginning materials. It was it was super tacky. Yeah. With like very minimal air release, and it took me an hour and a half to lay down a hood by myself without trimming and tucking it. Jesus. Yeah, I was like, this is ridiculous. I should have done like half an hour doing the whole thing with tuck and cut and everything. That's insane. Like, what, did they buy well, it online? That material? Yeah, he got it from online. He even has some Chinese writing on the box, too. I was like, yeah, <laughs> this isn't good material. How how often do you get people off the street that bring their own media in? Uh, very, very rarely, honestly. A lot of the times people are like, oh, can I bring my own material in? I'm like, I mean, you could, but I can't stand behind the quality of the material or mm-hmm. the work I give you. Um, but I still kind of refuse not to do it anyways if it's not 3M or Avery because I don't want the hassle of bad quality on my name. Right. So even then, I'm like still iffy Annie on if I even let them bring it in. For sure. For sure. Yeah, because so. it's, it's just a gamble for you. And we all know time is money. and. You exactly. Know, you bring that in and do it an hour doing a hood by yourself. That's you're working like an asshole. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like no, thank you. Yep. Return that, or that's gonna be a D- DIY type of media for yourself. You know? Yeah, and that's what I told him too. I was like, uh, you probably got a couple buddies that want to do like the interior, right? And they want to do it themselves. I'm like, you could probably make some money back from the material because <laughs> you can't send it back. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's sell, sell your buddies a couple yards and make your yeah, money exactly. back. Oh man, that's you funny. Know. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do, right? Exactly. You know, I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to work around these door handles with this stuff. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. No way. So. No way. Do you do do you do now with the like the digital stuff and, and like the commercial side or custom livery stuff? Do do you design some stuff uh, in house or do you have that other company kind of create it for you? So all our design work is in house, except for like a super huge project or something that my designer can't do because mm-hmm. I have a guy in the shop or at least on his free time or non day job time mm-hmm. uh who comes in and does like all the the sticker designs or the graphic designs or runs the cutter for me because we have a big suma 60 inch cutter that i invested in because i was like oh we're gonna do thousands of stickers because that's how our business was going right and then it just became the library cutter not the sticker cutter hmm. <laughs> That's so. that's so funny, but you know the Suma is a really good um, Suma is a really good cutter, man. I had a um, I had a fifty, what was that, fifty four? I think it was mm-hmm. inch um, D one forty. Yep. And that thing, man, I ran that thing every day, bro. That thing cut like a dream. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I went out and got the S. Uh, 160 or the S2 160, which is the 60 inch with the tangential head on it. Tangential head, yeah, that's uh-huh. the way to go, bro. That's a, yeah, that's it, a big dog right there. It's made my life a hundred times easier going from like a US little 30 inch cutter that cuts like crap. Cuts <laughs> decent when you're doing like just a couple stickers, but right. you're on hundreds at a time. It's not the sticker machine for you. Yeah, dude, that technology, that tan tan. T- uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it half the time. <laughs> tangential. Tangential. It's it's the the head doesn't just go down and then the rollers move it. The the head actually swivels. Swivels goes ups and down. Oh, yeah, yeah dude, the, the whole thing's badass. You get you get <laughs> you get like way bit like cleaner cuts, and then you could do mm-hmm. the perforated with that as well. Correct. Right. And that's that's the cool thing, especially with our logo. Uh, when I des- I had a design because it, it was halfway through the time I started, but um, I had another guy design it for me real fast, and we were like, "All right, we want we want classy style on the the letters. We want it to be super legible, 
And then we came up with this one. We're like, all right, cool. And then you go to cut on that U.S. cutter with the logo and a nine inch by two inch. Mm. And that auto styling word is the nightmare to try to Weed. keep together. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You can't cut so. little, little, little letters, man. You mm-hmm. know, with those things, it's like there's a tolerance for that shit. Exactly. But now with that Suma, dude, I'm sure you can cut like quarter inch letters and weed them out. No, no issue. <laughs> no, no issue at all. Like to give you an example, like how extreme it's gotten now with the, the quality of the, the um, equipment is I had my designer whip because we were doing the de- uh, design for a Subaru Outback or Tribeca or whatever. And it was a, a mountain in the background and uh, an eagle and like a whole like tree line. Mm. Well, he made it so detailed. It took normally what would take it at, you know, say a handful of crazy intense stickers a minute or so. Mm-hmm. It took this cutter for one side of the car at 80 inches by 12 inches with how much detail he had. About 20 minutes. Really? Yeah. Holy but we went to go weed it and we're like, holy shit. We're like, look at this. We're like, this is going to be a nightmare to weed. I don't even want to do this anymore. And we like, we went to go weed it and we're like, wow, that actually came out half decent. I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After you're done weeding and like, everything. Shit. Yeah. You couldn't even really tell the, the, like there was some pieces missing, you know, cause of detail, but for the most part, you couldn't tell it was any different than what was on the computer. Wow. It was that detailed and that good on the quality when we pulled it all apart. I was just, like, wow. That's insane, <laughs> dude. Like something like that, I'd almost just print the goddamn thing. You know what I mean? Well, that was the funny thing is we got, we got into it and I was like, yeah, this is a mistake and a half doing it this way. <laughs> Yeah, t- <laughs> 20 minutes in cutting each side and then another probably 20 minutes in weeding it. Jesus. Yeah, so I I walked through the customer. I'm like, yeah, so you got this really badass design. <laughs> we got super detailed in it, but I'm not going to give you this product and sticker material. And they're like, huh? I'm like, no, we're going we're gonna to send this off to the printer. We're going to print it on clear instead of doing this weeding because it will last you maybe – the next time you go to wash your car. Yeah. And they're like, uh, yeah, okay, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially with the die cut stuff. It's, it, it's tough yeah. because if you, you power wash it and you, you catch mm-hmm. a corner, forget it. Like, well, that was the thing with the tree line is, you know, all those little points yep. on, you know, some ferns. Yeah. I'm like, oh boy. You're just going to wipe one towel and it's going to be destroyed. I know, dude. And, and the good thing about that Suma is that it, it, it overcuts it by the thousands of an inch. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's easier to weed. And then you can just, yep. if you put those little bevels on the, on your edges that are points, mm-hmm. you're, you're pretty good, man. I mean, that thing, that thing could cut really good. I can't say enough about Suma. I, I know they got bought out by another company. I forget yeah. what the company was, but they were like into, they weren't like a, like a graphic company. They were like a plastic company or something bought them out. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, it was right at the time I was buying the cutter too. Really? Now, uh, do, do they, yeah. do they have a local, um, facility near you, um, where you could pick so, it up or? Their facility is still up in Seattle. Okay. Or Seattle area. Yep. Um, but there's a mom and pop like sign shop supplier down here by me about 20 minutes away nice. in downtown portland area nice. and i can i got my cutter from them and they just they drop shipped it straight to the shop and then the shop brought it to me and put it together i was like cool i don't do nothing <laughs> right that's the best way to do it dude i got my you know, just I, figure out how to play with it <laughs> that's it dude did you do the whole demo there and everything did they have one uh, the set up? The funny part, <laughs> the funny part is we got we got the shop to come bring it to us or whatever, and they're like, "Yeah, we don't deal with enough sumas, so we don't really know how to use this right." <laughs> oh, like, oh Jesus! God. I guess I'll figure it out on my own. Thank you, though. <laughs> wow how how long did it take you to to kind of dial it in? 
Mm, I think we had it dialed in by the next day yeah. after we played with it long enough. So it wasn't too shabby, but what software are you using to uh to cut? Are you using like Fluxy Sign or Um no, it's I think it's Winplot is what it is. Ah, uh, Winplot, yep. Yep. Which came with the Suma cutter. Right. So we just we've been using that instead of trying to go find a different cuz I've always used Corel as my design program Ooh. and then use another Corel guy. Fuck, <laughs> dude. Right. Jesus. Me yeah. and my designer go back and forth arguing. It's kind of funny because he's a, he's an AI guy, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. He, it's kind of like the t- ongoing thing for like all yeah. the designers out there, man. It's like Corel or, uh, or, uh, AI, you know AI. what I mean? Yeah. Ugh. And he, he self taught himself how to use AI a hundred percent. Like the only thing he's ever done is like paid some kid night or like 17 year old kid that's in New York for like a couple hours at a time to show him how to draw cars. Wow. <laughs> like the rest of it, he self taught himself and like broken other people's artwork down and like try to figure out how they did it and stuff. So I give him super duper credit for what he's done, but yeah. <laughs> it's a tough, it's a tough program, man. The top, to, it either, is. Either, either one, either one's tough. I mean, they say Corel draws kind of, kind of easy, but I, I think no matter which way you, you, you slice it, if you're not a designer or haven't been doing it for a few years, mm-hmm. that shit's all gibberish to a lot of people, man. Oh yeah. They were both gibberish to me when I first got into them. And then I started playing with Corel. I was like, all right, I got to teach myself how to do this while I make stickers. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, le- learn on a fire. That's, that's the best way to learn. Exactly. You know, but so, so what else you got going on? So you got this livery print graphic going on. What, what else you got cooking over there? Um, we got a Tesla model three coming in on the weekend or on Friday. Comes in for paint protection, uh, chrome delete, full paint correction as well, and a full ceramic coating. Damn. So we got a whole big old project on that one too. Wow, and you do all you do all that in house? All in house. Wow, dude. One man stop shop, basically. <laughs> really? So so are you are you like as far as like people that work with you, is it just just you? You solo? Uh, for the most part, I'm pretty much solo. So like over the summer I had, or like for the last year, almost a year and a half now, I had a guy that was coming in right after his day job, coming in and learning as much as he can. Cause he came to me, he's like, I want to, I want to learn how to rap. I was like, okay, you can come in all you want, but I'm not paying you cause I can't pay you right now. Right. Cause we weren't there yet. Right. And he's like, okay, that's fine. So he came in every day from there on out and was just, where can I help? How can I learn? Where can I learn? You know, he'd get his hands dirty with me and stuff and start learning how to rap. Nice. So finally the summer came and he lost his day job. And I was like, all right, well, we're in the summertime, so it's busy. I mean, I can start trying to figure out how to pay you and whatnot and help you out because you've learned as much as you can. I can kind of put you on your own stuff and not have the stress over it. Mm-hmm. So I did that for a little bit, and then we got closer to this winter. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen now. It's winter time, and I don't have a day job this time, so who knows? Wow. But got him and then the designer um, who comes in on his after his day job, and then my wife who gives a helpful hand wherever she can and mostly run the back end of the books and all that fun jazz. Yeah. Yeah. And then a media guy and that's it. So it's it's pretty much I do all the PPF, I do all the window tint, and then I do all the vinyl wrap with a little bit of help here and there for vinyl wrap. Jesus, dude. So it's, yeah. it's bad enough to have a one man band doing raps, but fuck, you're doing PPF, window tint, paint protection, and mm-hmm. and, and paint correction. Yep. So paint correction is actually very, very new. So when we, right before SEMA, I was in Vegas for a couple of days earlier mm. and I took ceramic pros, uh, paint correction and coating class, certification class. Yeah. So we went in to really, fig- cause before that, for a few months, we've been installing ceramic coatings on top of the wraps going out the door. 
Right. And I was like, okay, let's play with the paint world now so we can offer both sides of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. So now it's something that we're getting into full time on the, the paint correction and sharing and coating on paint too. Um, but the nice thing about that is I have a buddy who I've worked with for years now and he's like, he's a full on detailer. So I'm going to have him do all the paint correction stuff instead and just pay him for the job and then do the coating myself. Yeah. Put on the stress over the, the 12 hours of paint correction time. Oh my God. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> that's like, so. that's like a whole nother world. Like the paint correction and detailing. My God, dude. Mm-hmm. That's insane. So, so are you, so now you're certified. You took that class. Now you're certified for ceramic pro. Mm-hmm. For, I'm for, certified for through ceramic pro now for all their ceramic coatings. So I can do it on the automotive paint and I can do it on vinyl wrap and everything else now. That's awesome. So. You know, that, that is such a great product for at least a wrap game for durability and longevity of the wrap, man. And I, I think a lot. And honestly, and like I might be dumbing this down, it might be a lot more processed than what I'm explaining. But what is it like? Two or three dots on the on the on the sponge, and you basically you have to wipe it in the same direction. Yeah, so it, it's it's similar to that. So you you got your applicator pad, you get your applicator pad in a way soaked mm-hmm. of the coating, and then wipe it on. You know, apply it on there with some firm pressure and get it soaked into the vinyl. Because the vinyl wrap starts so like literally soaking in the coating, which is where they've been working on it for you know ever now to get it to stay on top of the wrap mm-hmm. and not fully inside the wrap where it just goes away. Oh, it like embeds um, into it, like mm-hmm. oh, yeah, okay. All yeah, right. if you're not doing a couple coats of ceramic pro or coating then all it's doing is just going inside the wrap and the moment you put an extra coat on, then it starts, you know, layering it up. So it's above the wrap and then helps protect the wrap and everything else, which is a nice thing. How many coatings are you, are you applying to like a, just a vinyl wrap? Uh, it depends on the finish, matte satin or gloss, uh, gloss you're usually doing, you know, at the bare minimum, two base coats and a top coat. Um, mm-hmm. uh, if you're dealing with satins and mats and you're looking at, uh, one to two coats, uh, max of base coat, if it's a matte or satin, and if it's a satin, then you can add a top coat too, if you really want. Depends on the color though, too. It might start sheening it up more so it's more glossy and that may distort the color. Right, right. I, I, I've, yeah, I've heard that like a, like a straight matte will turn like semi satiny. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's coated. You know, I mean, I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather have that extra durability and, and lose a little bit of the mat than, yep. you know, having to replace it in a year or two. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you, did you make it to Ceramic Pro's booth this year at SEMA? I, I, I honestly didn't even get the chance to attend SEMA this year. I was so bummed out. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, yeah. Don't even get my, my heart. I, I'm just getting over it, dude. You don't have to stick the dagger in. You know what I mean? I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was crying watching everybody's posts and fucking live feeds. Really? And I'm like, my God, like, how am I missing this? But <laughs> there's always next year, man. Right. Yeah. This year, so Ceramic Pro, give you a little insight real quick on more of Ceramic Pro. So they took a Porsche, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called, the SUV or the, the wagon Porsche. Uh, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking like the four door style, yeah, the, the, the four pan- door pan- Porsche. P- Panamera. Panorama. Panorama. That's it. Yep. Or the Panamera. That's what it is. Panamera. Um, but they took that car and then they took multiple different colors, multiple different finishes, um, and then even some, uh, vi- uh, clear bra material and then laid stripes along the side of it. So vertical stripes of each color mm-hmm. and then masked off half of each color and clearly one side of each color. So when you, Look at it. One side of the color, the left side of the color is coated. The right side of the color is not coated. Right. 
and then they left it out in the weather, you know, San Diego weather, drove it around everywhere, like everything, and never washed it for a full year. Wow. And watched what all the vinyl wrap did over a full year, whether it looked shiny, where it didn't look shiny, if it lasted through the UVs, if it didn't last through the UVs, if the metallic started like, um, like the metallic colors, mm-hmm. they started to rust. The metallics inside the vinyl wrap started rusting. What? So you get little rust spots. Oh my God. Yeah. It was super interesting to see it in person, like up close. I'm like, Oh, that's what happens when you don't take care of your rap. See people <laughs> take care of your rap. <laughs> that's funny. You know, so you learned a lot and, and, and they, they, you know, getting a cert in that too, man. I'll, I'll tell you, like, it's such, it seems like an easy process and it, and it's a, gr- I think it's a great fucking upsell for the amount of money people are charging to do ceramic coatings. I think it's, it's worth it. It is definitely a, a killer upsell and the profit margins. I'm not saying this out loud, but they're good. <laughs> oh, I can imagine, dude. I mean, how much, how many, how many cars can you coat with that single bottle? I'd say a, a, a handful, maybe? Depending on how nice I am with the coating, like how thick of a coat I put on it. Yeah. I can usually do a handful of cars with one bottle. <sighs> You know, so say your base coat, if you're doing two base coats on each car, you can do probably three base or three cars, you know, and that's pretty heavy on your coating too. Yeah. But you can get, they usually say you can get five plus cars out of one bottle if you're super frugalist with it. Right. But. I think, I think it's a great, it's a great upsell, man. And uh, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, mar- like you said, the margins are there and everything. Yep. I, th- I think it's just people should take advantage of it. Cause that's the first thing people are, are always going to ask. How long am I going to get out of this? What's the durability yep. like? And especially kind of where you're at, where you see a lot of the, the weather's sun- horrible. <laughs> yeah. The sun is just brutal on the West coast. You know what I mean? Like. That's probably that your number and the one sun killer. And the sleet. Yeah. <laughs> and the snow and the ice. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you see all four seasons. I didn't know that. See, I'm learning something today. Yep. I wasn't, here in, here I wasn't in the good Northwest, as... we basically get to play with them all. <laughs> I don't, I wasn't never good in social studies. <laughs> <laughs> You're all good. Man. Oh, fuck, dude. It's, it's crazy. But I'll tell you, like, like here too, I mean, with this, with the salt. When they salt the roads, mm-hmm. that's a fucking laminate killer, dude. So, so you guys get salt over in your neck of the woods. We get rock. Rock, shit, that's even worse. <laughs> they slap down rock, and then it's here till middle of summer. Really? It's not almost the end of summer. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it's they drop it everywhere, and then they can't pick it up in time. And the the city is very inefficient around. Portland, mm. to say the least. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we just get buried with fucking salt pellets. It, it's fucking annoying. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just th- that I, I've noticed that that kills the. If you don't wash your car in the winter time, dude, your mm-hmm. laminates fucked by summer. So that's the nice thing about ceramic coating is you put it on top of that wrap or. You do the whole undercarriage of your car. Mm. Mm-hmm. Done. Golden. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're going to still maintain it, but you're not going to have to stress as hard without shit. that coating on it. No shit. No shit. Fuck. Yeah. Right? <laughs> He's like, hmm, maybe I'm gonna go find a ceramic coat. Uh, I literally <laughs> have both my hands over my head and I'm like, who do I need to call tomorrow to figure this shit <laughs> right. out right now? Cause it's, like I said, man, it's just a great upsell and it's, it's not mm-hmm. tedious. It's literally, you're just no. covering the fucking car with the, with the sponge and just as long as you do the technique, you, you're fucking all set. Yep, if you're doing the technique of, you know, applying it properly and then doing the technique of pulling it back off, the excess back off properly, it's almost a no-brainer. And there's there's other brands out there of ceramic coatings that are a lot easier to install as a consumer basis if you don't really have the true training for it. Yeah. 
Um, so it, it's it's definitely you know available even if you're not a certified installer. So right, right. I'm sure you get the perks. You know, once you get certified, and you probably get a put, oh, yeah. put on the website as a certified installer, and that helps you out as far as revenues in your local area and all that stuff. So I think it's worth. You know, that's one of the great perks of doing certifications is that, you know, yep. you, you get uh, ahead. Is there anybody around you that does similar, similar uh, services? Or? Actually, there is. There's, um, there's a couple of shops. Um, there's a handful of shops on the west side of Portland that do Serenic Crow. Um, and then there's a couple of shops on the east side that do other ceramic coatings but there's only like a couple ceramic pro true install certified shops around portland so nice. it's not too shabby nice now do, do you have do you carry any other certs other than the ceramic pro right now for any like vinyl distributors or anything i carry avery's right now nice. until i can go finally take the 3M one that's a million dollars and on the other side of my country. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! You Wait, know how long ago did you do the Avery uh, test? Uh, I did Avery back in February. Nice, dude. Congrats on that. Thank you. That's uh, that's yeah. a, that's a, you know, it's a, it, it's a good one and it's a, it's a pretty hard one. Who, who tested you on that? Do you remember? Was it Justin? Justin. Nice. It was Justin. Nice. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very, um, scary, I guess, in a way to put it. I mean, that's not quite the word I want to use, but it was, it was definitely that way. <laughs> yeah, it's overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, you're getting, you're getting kind of, uh, you know, critiqued by the number one person in the mm-hmm. industry. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, you, you don't want to leave there kind of, you know, you don't want to leave there without the cert. You know what I mean? You, you, if, if yeah. you, if your, your heart and soul is into it, you, you'll do well. And, you know, mm-hmm. and if you've been doing it for a while, you've got a little bit of a background. But to do it in front of somebody, to have them watch you do it, it's a different feeling than being in your own environment <laughs> and just doing it where it's more natural. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Which is which is the interesting part, too, because it, it's funny because uh, my rapper installer helper, uh, he... He cracks me up because he, he gets anxiety really bad when there's a lot of people or like say some, cause our, our shop is really weird. You like literally walk through the front door and in the shop, mm-hmm. there's no office, there's no front desk, there's no nothing. We're literally an open room that we just kind of compile everything into. Yeah. So like if a customer comes in and is just sitting there chit chatting and like asking questions and stuff and we're wrapping a car, he like starts getting nervous when he's rapping because people are watching him. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm the opposite. I'm like, cool, whatever. Yeah. I'll show you how to do this. I'm, I'll make funny. it look damn good. Like, <laughs> I'll make magic out of my ass come, come from somewhere. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. The, the, dude, I like, I get anxiety sometimes. I Like, I used to get anxiety when people used to watch me. And I, I used yeah. to tell clients that, like, if they were waiting for it, because we had a waiting area. If they yeah. watched me, I have to charge them extra to watch me. Cause it's like, like, I don't know, just the whole, like, not that you would do anything wrong or it, right. it, you're more apt to be asking a lot more questions during the installation mm-hmm. where there doesn't need to be any, where you could just like yeah. fly through it and just get, get it done. It's like, Oh, wh- why did you cut it like this? Or, you know, yep. it's, it's, <laughs> uh, it's so- like, God forbid something went wrong. You have to pick something back up to, and then they're g- giving you the fucking weird face. Like, well, Oh, he fucked up. How's he going to fix that? <laughs> like, it's like, relax, right? dude. I'm a fucking magician here. I'm going to make, yeah. <laughs> going to make this shit disappear. Watch. You know what I mean? But which is so funny. Cause you even do that when you're just working side by side with like your, say your, your coworker, your employee, or right. your boss or something. You're like, yeah, I'm a magician. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Cause they're like, uh, I'm curious to see how you're going to fix this fuck up. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. You know? Dude. It, it's funny. You know, I used to be a solo guy. So like a lot of the time, like I would, I'd be by myself, but like I'd have friends come by and, they'd be watching me. They're like, dude, how do you, how do you even do this? Like, 
<laughs> right. cut, cut and precise around the door handles, around uh-huh. mirrors, like all this shit. I'm like, I don't know. I really don't have the patience. <laughs> I don't have patience for anything else other than this for some reason. Like, I right. can, I can, dude, it's like as, uh, like, a, I keep saying it, it's like a Zen thing. Like, if I got music blaring in the background and I'm falling into the fucking, I'm just like falling into the project and I'm just like, whoa, all right, I'm fucking, next you know, I'm a couple hours in, car's almost done. It's like, yep. holy shit. Like, I just bombed through this whole project really fast, didn't even bat an eye and, but like oh, it's, yeah. it, it's it's so funny when but when you, like you said when you got a coworker working with you and it's like how are you gonna cut that you're gonna cut that nice you ain't gonna fuck that cut up right it's you get to, <laughs> you get to play right. you get to play a little bit you know what I mean yeah you get to challenge each other a little bit more and like push their button just a tad <laughs> right and that's what it's all about dude just just pushing each other to like the next level or you know how how do you attack this like show me how you would do that because i always say Mm -hmm. too like there's different ways of doing the same thing it's just as long at the end of the day as long as you get the same result at the end it doesn't really matter how you got there you know yeah exactly before we get into like the crazy deep stuff dude i want to hear i want to hear your story i want to hear about how you uh how you got into this freaking crazy industry (laughs) it's actually extremely interesting on my part only because uh, so i went to i went to school for automotive mechanical Mm -hmm. and i was like all right cool i'm I'm gonna do this automotive mechanical stuff i'm gonna go go work on cars yada yada and i was like okay i only have two more general classes but guess what i just got this job over at this welding place that makes $5 $5 more an hour. Nope, I'm good. I'm out. <laughs> so I never finished my schooling and went to go get uh, a day job over at a welding facility doing um, barges and marine cars or um, train cars. Mm-hmm. And at that same time, the wife and I were uh, getting, you know, going to her school and everything and dealing with all that. And we were living on our own and living about an hour and a half away from Portland, which is where my day job was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I really want to run my own business still. So I got into talking to wife about it. And she's like, well, I don't know. You, you, you got all this time that you have to travel back and forth and you got your day job. I don't know if you run your business. I mean, you could try to do a hobby type of thing. I was like, okay, I guess, whatever. <laughs> we'll <You> compromise. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, so I decided to start making shirts actually and apparel and doing heat transfer and screen printing. And so I went out and bought a bunch of, you know, product and, uh, equipment and whatnot. And, slapped in a six color four station screen press in the middle of my living room <laughs> with my wife still in school bitching at me because we're taking up half the living room oh man <laughs> yeah you got a lot of talking and explaining to do exactly so i was like you know what i'm just gonna keep doing this i'll build you know i'm making shirts and stuff like that i'm gonna build a clothing brand and we started playing with more and more stickers and i was like okay well I'm in the car community because I love cars and I've grown up around them. But the best thing about the car community is they love stickers. Mm. So, you know, from there, I start making more stickers and more stickers and bigger stickers and bigger stickers. And then we're like, okay, we're not just playing with big stickers anymore. Let's go wrap your car. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to figure it out. Because I know you can slap a whole sticker on your car. Right. Do you remember, I had a buddy look at me like, huh? Do you remember what year that was around? Uh, 2016-ish. When I started doing the screen printing was 2015, wow. 2014, 2015. And then I was, you know, still traveling an hour and a half back and forth. One way, kid you not, an hour and a half, one way to work. Jeez. You know, my graveyard shift. From 10 o'clock at night till 6.30 in the morning. Wow. Go home, pass out, sleep for a couple hours, get up, make shirts, make stickers, and complete customer orders. 
And that went on for about a year or so almost. And then we got into playing with, like I said, the bigger, bigger stickers. And I had a buddy who uh, is in the drift community. So he drifts his car around the track and whatnot. Little Han- or Nissan 240SX. Mm-hmm. I was like, let me wrap your car, man. He's like, sure. And we go and we go look at the color book because I had just picked one up and stuff. And um, I was like, here, let's let's look at colors. And he's like, all right, cool. I want this color. And he picks this gloss dark gray from Avery. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, are you sure you want that color? He's like, yep, I want that color. I'm like, okay, because your car already is gray, though. <laughs> I was going to say, what color is he transform- transforming it to? And I was like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Never mind. Scratch that comment. I forgot. You're colorblind. <laughs> oh, no, no, he really? He was? <laughs> He's colorblind. So I was like, oh, yeah, everything looks black and white to you almost. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I was like, all right. We'll wrap your car. We'll wrap it dark gloss gray. So uh, it was my very first wrap I had gotten uh, um, over the year. Had built up a relationship with a guy that was an auto mechanic, and he was the one that did all the mechanical work for our buddy on his drift car. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Hey, can I borrow some shot space to wrap, you know, Chuck's car?" And he's like, "Yeah, no problem." So I wrapped his car there, and then. His, uh, his employee that worked for him at the shop was like, Oh, you should wrap my race car too, my drag car. I was like, Okay, cool. What color do you want? And at this time, I was going and taking the Avery, uh, um, beginner class with the whole digital print and everything. Right, right, right. So, you know, it's the time of the time where you can get your own color. And I was like, Okay, cool. I want this color as my color. And it was a Bahama blue. And I was going to, I was going to get it. But the guy's like, yep, that, that color doesn't fall into your free roll of vinyl for your class. I'm like, well, that blows. Yeah. Oh, shit. So. <laughs> so, so you can only pick specific, uh, colors. Yeah. So like any of the like super specialty colors, they won't let you have them. Like, mm. No, that, that's a bummer. You forgot to read the fine print. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> that's how I'm they like, get oh, you. Well. But I was like, oh, I'll wrap my Subaru in that color. And then we went with a matte metallic purple and never actually wrapped the car in it. But uh, I got the blue for the guy because he's like, I'll pay for the material. You know, you install it. I was like, sure. So I installed it on this two-door rabbit. Wow. That was all caught up with, like, over fender like rubber flares on it and shit. It was super whack. But it looked good when it was going down the strip at, you know, 100 miles an hour, so it didn't matter. <laughs> right, right, right. But at least you got your feet wet, you know? Exactly. And I got my feet wet with some, you know, some cars that were going to get destroyed and go on the racetrack, and they didn't really care what it fully looked like, so it wasn't that huge of a deal if my quality standard wasn't that good you know right because you just you just learning and you're just figuring it all out exactly i was i was learning i was playing the the i'm gonna get my feet wet and my hands wet and there's no turning back now right <laughs> right so i did that for a little bit and did like miscellaneous little jobs and whatnot and uh ran into basically just started trying to build and brand tailored because i was like originally the business was called you are here designs and it was supposed to be, like I said, the clothing line. Mm. And I was like, this doesn't fit in the car community. Too many people keep asking me what the hell I do and what it's all about. I'm tired of explaining myself. Yeah, yeah. Your, your name and your brand is fucking so crucial. It is. And it's, it's incredible, you know, how important those two items are for just a single business. Yeah, yep. You know. Absolutely. And it's but, fu- and it's yeah. funny because you don't have like rap in your in your in your name, your brand, what you do. It's just and st- I styling. did that on purpose to keep your and options open. I did open. that on purpose, mm-hmm. so we could keep our options open for if ex- expansion was possible in what we were looking at. Because I didn't want to be like 
when I when I came up with Taylor Dollar Styling, it took me two months to come up with a new look, a new name in general. And I was like, I I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, I want a new name. I want it to be better. I want it to be this. I want it to be that. And I uh, I was like, I don't want it to be though location specific and specific service specific. Right. So that's why we use the word tailored because I wanted to play with the high end cars, the exotics, you know, the guys with lots of money that I'm coming to find out more and more over the years. They're the ones that don't want to spend the money. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the rap world, bro. <laughs> right. That is exactly. so funny. And then all the styling was just keep it easy. So. Yeah, dude, isn't it funny once you get kind of into it and now you're like full blown, like swimming in the shit and you're like, Mm -hmm. wow, it's not really what I thought it was going to be like business plan (laughs) wise. What you thought and and interpreted like what everything would be is probably completely flipped to reality. Uh, Just about. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Pretty close analogy for sure. You know. That's so funny. So it took you two months, come up with the brand, come up with your logo, get your feet wet, got a couple cars done. So your first car was a drift car, which is, which is good because you get the technique. So you took the class. What did you take away from the class? Um, with that, that the starter Avery class. So the Avery class, the first Avery class was, was good in the way of understanding a little bit more of how to, do solo insulation, mm-hmm. you know, and how to how to look at the car in ways where you can go around, say, the back of a quarter panel towards the trunk and taillight area without having to stress about corners or the material distorting or you know just like everything because it was it was all commercial based material that we were playing with, so you know you got to make sure that the design the printed design doesn't get all screwy wonky when you're going around a corner or bend or, right. you know, in a corner. So right. that, was, that was one of the big things I learned from it. Um, only because I had all the me- mechanical, but also some of the laying down and how the squeegee and like, I mean, I watched a lot of YouTube as we all would call it. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, YouTube certified yeah. type, type stuff. Always. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Got to keep that in your back pocket. Exactly. That, that, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a plaque that just says YouTube certified and put it on my desk. That's so just so funny. people can question it. <laughs> That's so funny. But you know, starting off doing that and, and figuring out the whole like commercial side installation uh, side of the business. What made you, other than like your passion for cars, what made you? get more into the restyling side over the commercial side because a lot of us know commercial is kind of where the money is the constant money the return the fleets the the quick turnarounds and you know with the restyling you you could be working on a project for three to five days and that's the only thing you're working on all week it's what what made you kind of you know stick to your guns the restyling side in your location over the the you know, the commercial end of it, things. I stuck in that side uh, a lot because, um, mainly the passion for the car side, but the, the mere fact that in our area, in the Portland area, there is no real designated company that focuses highly on their quality standard for the car show guys. Mm. I mean, the car show guys are a lot of our clientele. I mean, I, I have regular car enthusiast guys, but oh, the guys that I'm doing full wraps for, they're all ones in the car shows, going to all the car shows in the Northwest. And they're traveling to California for car, just the car show. So I look at the quality standard at some of those guys. I'm like, eh. I, I have a higher expectation and I still want to play with all the exotic guys and I want to play with all those guys that have a high standard, not just for what their car is, but what their quality is that they're getting from say a shop like me. Right. So I was always trying to focus on being that number one shop that everybody in the car community knows and can rely on for getting 
something crazy, wild, extreme, and a hundred percent flawless. Mm. So that was that was a lot of the reason why I stayed in the the styling side instead of the commercial side. And yeah, I look back and it's like, yeah, I could have made you know more connections, more money in the the commercial side, but at the same time, you know, there's there can be a balance between both of them though too. Totally. You know, having having your styling guys that you're given a hundred percent flawless quality material to or installation to. And then there's also those guys that you can turn and burn real quick and send them out the door and they're like, Ooh, cool. Thank you. Yeah. And that's all that matters. Yeah. You know, so there, there's still a, there's definitely a balance between the two that I've been working on trying to control and make sure that me, I know in my head, okay, this one can go out quality standard, but don't stress over it being in the shop too long. You know, right? Yeah, because I mean, versus that's the biggest stress on a lot of us. It's how quick can we get this done? Because time is money, and mm -hmm. you know, when when a car is sitting there, sometimes a lot of us don't have the space for it. We're we have one or two cars, you know, outside, and we can only fit one or two cars in the bay that yep. you have. It's space is limited, and 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 time is of the essence because it's yep. you know we all we all know you you could put you know 20 20 30 hours into a car 40 hours into a car and you know th that's a whole week you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean normal nine to fivers i know <laughs> i i, I right. know I, I i stretched that a little bit you know a lot of us are working <laughs> right. fucking 15 hour days 12 hour days whatever the case may be and you know i always stress to everybody it's like Physically and mentally and health wise, the eight hours should be your max you put in just because mm -hmm. it's, you know, you need time for you to recharge, yeah. get your batteries, eight hours of sleep, you know, all that good stuff in order to be the best you can be for the following day. If you keep doing 15, 18, 20 hour days, you're burning the candlestick on both ends, man. It's crazy. Yep. Crazy. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that one 100 percent because those first three years i was you know sleeping four hours you awesome. know max you know four to six hours a day and that was it and then i'm back to the grind going to the day job or going to the shop to go bust stuff out and yep. you know that 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 definitely was how it was and it's it's changed a lot in the last i don't know three months now two months now nice especially the last like month because i'm like okay stuff's gotta change i can't show up at the shop at 10 o'clock in the morning and then get back home at like four o'clock in the morning the next day like it, it can't go that way anymore <laughs> no no <laughs> definitely can't holy shit that's a long right. ass day you know and that that's how I, back in february i lost my day job when I went down to go do my certification. So it was, it was like, all right, well, time to get back to the grindstones. I literally 10 to like two, 10 to four, 10 to 12, you know, I was here running circles all day long wow. trying to keep the business going. It's summertime. Everybody wants everything done. You know? So you lost, so you lost your part-time job going down to get certified for the rap industry. <laughs> no shit. Basically. So you came back to no part-time job or like, what was it? Like just kind of like a, I, I'm sure you made way more money rapping, but it was kind of like a good steady, you know, constant income. It was nice to have that, right? So when I was at my day job, I was there for three, three and a half years. First six months was like uh, I'm the brute guy, yada yada. By the first the end of the first year, I was in a lead position, running ten to twelve guys, and saying, "Here, go do this, go get this done. This needs to be done, yada yada." And then it came down to last winter. We were staying decent over the winter because I had my day job, so it wasn't like a stressor for us being super slow and whatnot. Right. Because we were consistently busy with raps. So I was like, okay, no big deal. Like we're we're busy enough. I don't have the stress. And then by the time February came, I was like, okay, I'm going I'm gonna go get the certification. I'm gonna come back. 
we'll see where I sit then because I'm almost at the position where I can go, all right, deuces, I'm out. Right. I'm going to go run my own business. You guys can go figure out your own stuff now. And we went down to California, LA to go do the class and certification. I took my guy that was my, my rap guy with me to go do the training with me. Um, and we literally got done with certification on Friday. The wife and I are like, all right, cool. We passed. And my guy's like, yeah, let's go, let's go to the museum. So we went to the, uh, Peterson museum down there, which is a whole like, Porsche four level story museum. Wow. We're like, all right, we're going to go celebrate me, get my certification. We're down there. And I get this phone call. I'm like, hello, this is Anthony. And they're like, yeah, this is blah, blah, blah from HR. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, what's going on? And they're like, yeah, so you've, uh, exceeded your, um, employee con, uh, conduct with, missing work i'm like i'm pretty sure i have just enough time that i'd be all right and they're like no you you maxed out your points and yada yada because they had like a point system for you can only f- AIs. yeah you can only miss a certain amount of days in a yeah. month and it and it regenerates itself after so many days and stuff like that yeah yeah their system was so cattywampus it wasn't even funny so <laughs> it was hard to explain and try to keep up and whatnot but yeah, they're like, yeah, we're gonna have to let you go. I was like, okay, cool. Thank you though. Wow. So I get off the phone and the wife automatically knew something was wrong. Like the phone call didn't go well. And I was like, <laughs> and I told my guy too, my rap guy, I was like, yep, yeah, we're probably gonna go to California and I'm probably gonna come back with no day job because they're probably gonna fire me. So I was mentally kind of prepared for the phone call already. There you go. But my wife looks at me and she's like, what was that? What happened? I was like, um, I love you and I have no Jade job anymore. Oh. We're going to have to figure out this business out. Yeah. And my wife just broke down like in mad anxiety and chaos and like scared shitless because I had just left basically a $70,000 a year job for a day job running my own business. And she, and, and, she, and, like, and she wasn't cool. working at all? No, she was working. But that was the thing is my day job was what Pay paid the all bills. the bills. Right. And right. helped pay for starting the business up. Yeah. Yeah. So and you, at that point in time, she wasn't ready to have her money coming in to not go to the savings account anymore. It was now going to have to pay for the bills that wasn't quite enough for the bills yet. Right. So her head went all cat crazy and stuff, and I decided, all right, well, it's grind time. So the rest of the weekend while we were in California, I went ham on social media. I went ham on phone calls. I went ham on text messages and set up the next three weeks that weekend. Wow, dude. Uh, I was like, we're going to be busy, and I'm not slowing down anymore. Good for you, bro. <clears throat> So yeah, it was, it was an interesting transition to say the least. And we weren't ready for it, but you never, I was mentally ready for it. <laughs> you're, nev- you're never going to be ready. And that's, and that's the thing that, that is the number one question I get on social media, probably mm-hmm. on a constant DM I get is people debating on leaving their full time job to pursue the rap career or, Mm-hmm. You know, they, they've gotten to a point where, you know, they, they have a good job that pays the bills. And, but it's, it's like the rap, the rap game is almost exceeding what they're doing full time. But, you know, you lose all the benefits. You lose that security blanket where it's like, mm-hmm. no matter what, every Friday you're fucking getting paid and then that's it. In the yep. rap game, you potentially could be getting paid every day per every job you get done. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a little bit different cash flow wise. You know, it's yep. you really have to budget yourself and realize that you know, the money you get is not the money you keep at the end of the day. You have to keep mm-hmm. on reinvesting it. Not like your nine to five where you get your money. You're like, okay, I got to pay my cell phone bill this week as a hundo. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. The rest of the money is mine. That was what, that's what was extremely difficult for us was the mere fact that Literally, 
for those three years that we've been in business, even till this day, I haven't had a day job since February, right? Yeah. To this day, I still have not paid myself. Really? Yep. I've reinvested every dollar back into the business, whether it's buying new equipment, whether it's buying new material, whether it's buying and stocking up our window tent, whether it's stocking up our PPF so we can offer those services, yeah. whether it's trying to pay for my media guy or my or my designer or paying my uh, my rapper. I mean, either way, I've still to this day I have not paid myself. Yeah, I mean, which is impressive for me to say. <laughs> absolutely, on my dude. head thinking about it now, and it and it's and it's scary, dude. A lot of people like they they tell you, you know, you don't make you don't make money till you're like fifth or sixth year in, and that's a hundred percent true, a hundred percent true. I mean, I'm I'm sure you pay yourself a little bit of a stipend once in a while when you, when you need to get well, something. Once but... in a while, say the the bills are a little short. All right, I'll, I'll cover the couple hundred or whatever. Yeah. But other than that, no, I still have not actually written myself a good quality check. That's that, that at the end of the day, that's a good business owner right there because you, you're, you're investing in your future and not so much investing in right now. You know, yeah. you, you understand that, you know, in order to keep this going, you have to continue, continuously feed this beast. And, yeah. you know, as soon as you stop doing that, that's when fucking everything goes to shit. I've seen mm -hmm. it. I've seen it. And not just in, in the industry, just in any fucking industry. When you don't, when you know, people get cocky, you know, you get your first $10,000 yeah. $10, job. You know what I mean? It's yep. like, yep, I fucking scored. No, dude, like, no, you you got to buy all the media. You got to fucking restock your shit. You got to pay your taxes. You got like, by the time you're sitting down, mm -hmm. you maybe walk away with four grand. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and that exactly. still ain't shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's still you find so you find true. something else to throw money at, and, and it's just mm -hmm. you know it's just the nature of the beast, and you know. You're still so new to the industry, and and you've done mm -hmm. you've been doing a lot. You certificate. You've been doing the right steps. You know, little by little, building up your building up your certs and building up your 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 clientele and everything. And you know, it's yep. I've I've watched you for a while now, and I'm super impressed from the from the beginning stages of Instagram and whatnot, because that's that's kind of like my main social media platform, but watching yeah. you and and seeing what you got going on and the cars that you're pulling out of these these places that you're working on is just amazing. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> I know someone's watching, that's good. <laughs> yeah, dude. I I'm, I'm definitely watching and and, yeah. and and on top of it you're you're starting the document which is kind of like mm -hmm. it's kind of like the new I don't want to say it's a new thing. It's for a while, but I think everyone's starting to pick up like it's yeah. it's like the the, the media and, and creating these vlogs. It's kind of like it kind of gives you like an inside view of who you are and what your shop's about. And you know, it does create awareness for the industry, and it does create good um like good video content for mm -hmm. people watching or or potential clients. You know what I mean? Because you you kind of run down and, and explain certain things and why you do it and what you're doing and how you're doing it. And it's just, we need more of that at the end of the day. I think we need good positive uh, videos out there that explain stuff. Cause at, at the end of the day, you know, there are things out there that are just not good. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Not, not to like throw on any, anybody underneath the bus, but it's just in any, in any industry, it, it, there, there's that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I mean, there's there's good and there's bad, it, whatever. But like to have, I've I've seen your stuff. I mean, you you haven't posted a lot of video content. I know it's it's slowly you're slowly building it up now, st still. But um, what you got going on, dude? It's super cool. I love I love watching when you, when you got something coming out. You know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we tr we try to give at least a video per car as much as possible, especially the big projects. You know, say a full wrap or something. We're always trying to give a uh, an end video for one of those. Right. Um, whether it's a little stuff like a roof wrap or a taillight tent. I mean, 
we try to, but at the end of the day, it's, it's so hard to try to keep that stuff going in and out the door and still keep that camera running right Mm -hmm. and not get in the way of each other. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's bittersweet. I try to run it as much as possible and try to create as much as content as possible. And we're, we're always trying to come up with something new and different that in a way can kind of isolate us from the standard. We're going to record ourselves and here we are and blah, blah, blah. And kind of cookie cutter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I'm, I'm always trying to keep us a little bit different, a little bit unique and in our own style, but it, it can get very difficult when everybody's doing it, but also in the way of like, I still got a whole run a business and I got to get creative and I got to still make sure money's going in the door. You know, so being a one man sim, a one man style of shop, it, it is definitely hard and then, you know, running that whole side of things too. So yeah, I can imagine, I, I, I can imagine like your day when you're, you've got everything going now at <laughs> once, media guys there, clients coming in, cars that need to be get done. You're probably running around with your head cut off half the time. Just about. I mean, <laughs> usually I'm working on something while I'm dealing with a client. I mean, depending on which one they are and what they want, then yeah. But, I mean, I still stop and walk away. And, All right, let's deal with you one-on-one. Let's make this happen. Right. Let's let's give you the best I can as fast as possible because I still got shit to go do. Right. <laughs> you know? Right, dude. But, but not be a jackass like, all right, you're interrupting me. Like, yeah, I gotta get Come back on. to this. Can we get to the point <laughs> you know? and and get your deposit down that to schedule you in? You know, I mean, exactly. That's at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want a deposit to secure something. Mm-hmm. It's like give me yep. something, you know, that I can work with, and then we'll we'll figure it all out later. You know what I mean? Exactly. It it can be difficult going back and forth on that 100. percent So uh, yeah, it, it's interesting when people are like, oh. I don't, I don't know how you do it. I was like, I don't know how I do it either. <laughs> but I get through it. That's all that matters. I figured it out though. It, it worked. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We're doing good. <laughs> right. Right. Let's not change anything right now. <laughs> exactly. That's so funny. What do you What do you think? What do you think the hardest part? Like because you just got thrown right into it. What do you think the hardest part was? Uh, you know, starting a business. The hardest part starting a business. Hmm. Would you have a tough time, like, trying to figure out? I think uh, the hardest part for me was not really having somebody that was holding my hand through the steps of learning how to run each individual thing. Mm. And I, I mean that as in, like, learning how to use Corel or learning how to make the Agile sticker and the trial and error it took to get to that point. Yeah. Or the trial and error of you know, wrapping a door or a handle or, you know, trying to make sure that the stuff is going on and not coming back off before I get pissed off too much. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I've, if, if people saw me like in motion wrapping at the beginning of my wrapping career, they'd be like, what in the world are you doing? Like, why? Like, what what is your reasoning behind it? And it was like the shop I ended up into because I I found another guy who uh, owns Headlights Northwest, mm-hmm. and he specializes in pulling headlights apart and doing customization to lighting and all this other stuff. And he was at the time where he's moving into a brand new big shop, so I subleased a little section from him. Um, and thankfully, he was super super cool and worked with me and like. My first few months were free, so I had no real overhead, right? Um, except for the material and the, the labor time. But he'd watch me in there wrapping, like even my my personal car when we wrapped it. I literally did the quarter panel probably three times. <laughs> you know, that's three yards of material each time too, and it's because there's too much dirt under it, or I cut too short, or this other little flaw. I'm like. Nope, not good enough. I pull it right off, back off. And I kept doing that over and over and over until it was a hundred percent perfect to what I was willing to leave on my car or even a customer's car. 
So like if there's any dirt on our fender, I pulled it off, right back off. I didn't care if it was like a couple little specks in a corner. It was coming back off. And I went through material a lot and did a lot of trial and error. And it sucked. It drove me bonkers. I got pissed off a lot, screamed, yelled, cussed, you know, every other thing that a rapper does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think that was one of the, the hardest parts was the trial and error aspect of failing so many times over and over and over and not giving up and not actually having that person side by side helping me yeah. through that, that time, you know, like, Oh, let's do it this way instead. And here's the proper way to do it. And here's how not to screw it up so many times. And here's, you know, that's, that's one of the hardest parts of, me being the business owner and doing it all myself from the beginning versus say my rap guy who's come in and he did some rapping himself but on his own motorcycle, you know, and yeah, it was a first time rap and we, we know how those look. Right. And, but he was willing to come in and actually use a, a side by side hand. And if I was in his position, when I started the business, I'd, uh, it definitely would have been a way different from the get go. So I, I really think that's one of the biggest struggles as the business owner itself in starting the business. It's it's basic. So you're basically saying it's the the drive to push yourself to do better mm -hmm. without having someone there to kind of tell you, hey, you can do this right, but you got to do it like this, or yep. giving you that extra motivation or that helping hand. Yeah, dude personal determination and motivation yeah i think is is the hardest thing that's or the best thing i've had that's helped me get through the toughest times in the business but you know what that's that's what at the end of the day you appreciate it more now i think uh, this is just my assumption you appreciate it more mm -hmm. now because you've went through those wrongs you learned by fire you figured it all out yourself you have more of an appreciation for the craft because at the end of the day this mm -hmm. is a craft this isn't just anybody off the street that can come in and fucking just slay there are uh, honestly there are people that can just pick up a squeegee and if for some reason they just get it but that yeah, is exactly. like one in a million you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Like there's one in a million people that, that, that just happens with, but determination, like you said, and motivation for sure, never giving up. It, you can, you can always get better in time. You just got to realize like you got to put in that time in order to get there. You know what I mean? Yep. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. See, I, I mean, that's, that's the way it was back then, back in 2006, mm -hmm. seven, eight, when this shit was all fresh and, Nobody knew what to do with it and everybody's trying to figure out a way right. to use it. And it's, you know, a lot of people, you know, had to learn that way. And that's just, you know, and now look at it, you know, 10, 10 years down the road, you know, look at all the colors we have. Look at all the technology, the way technology, yeah. the shit lays itself. But basically now it's basically, basically <laughs> you, you, you just have to know how to trim everything nice and be able not to fuck anything up and it's just it 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 fathoms me like how just in a 10 year gap where where we are and I'm one like I'm I I honestly sit down and I think what are the next 10 years going to look like you know what I mean oh yeah 100% I don't even I don't know 100%. I I can never answer that <laughs> question but damn dude like it, the way everything's you know going and it's still so new still the the industry is still still in its infancy it's everyone's still figuring things out and there's so many more people now interested in the industry because it's it's starting to really catch wind and 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 mm -hmm. grow and people want to be intrigued and you know, and it's nice because it's the car enthusiast that want to get into it. And then yep. you, you've got the, the sign guys that want to get into it. And it's a little bit of everybody, which is cool. You know what I mean? And the best part about it is it's, it's not even really the car enthusiast anymore. If you really sit back and look at it, it's even the people that just want to express themselves in general. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'll get, you, you look on YouTube and you can find the lady that wrapped her car with hearts and 
you know, crazy stuff for her boyfriend in hot pink <laughs> just because she wanted to prank him, you know? Right. But it's, it's like, it's little stuff where, like that. It's like people ask me all the time. I get, oh my God, I get people that are not in car enthusiasts at all. They're like, oh, I just want to do this to my car. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And it's just them expressing themselves through their car or it, you know, it's similar to them owning a house and designing it their own style or putting their own furniture in their house. It's, it's them expressing them inside their house. Right. But on their car this time, you know, or That's... on walls, depending on where we're doing it at. <laughs> right. Right. Do you do a lot of wall graphics as well? Uh, surprisingly, I don't. Mm. I've never really played with the wall industry enough yet. Um, a lot of it's just, we're so tied into the car scene. It's that, the the people that are looking for stuff to get done on walls are usually looking at a shop called signs. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah, they're, they're, they're playing Google and saying signs. I don't need signs, <laughs> <laughs> not rafts, <laughs> not car rafts. Right, you know? right, right, right. So it's a little bit different, but I mean, I definitely understand where the money is at and where the money could be. And, you know, it's, that's why we offer different things, not just, color change right or digital you know or printed wraps right, right. And we offer the ppf we offer the window tint we offer the ceramic coating we offer the detailing because that gives anybody that has a car a way to express and protect their asset in, in a lot of ways yeah absolutely so 100 percent. and 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 honestly looking at it as a business those those types of services are high dollar profit surfaces, uh, mm-hmm. s- services that you have. PPF ain't cheap to put on, but, and it ain't cheap to buy either, you know, on your mm-hmm. end, cause you gotta buy the rolls and the rolls aren't cheap. They're way more expensive than vinyl rolls. Oh yeah. So it's like your, your profit margins are a lot higher when you're doing a whole front hood and a bumper and mirrors. You know what I mean? You might work yep. a half a day. But you made maybe two days worth of work, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, in profit, you know. So it's 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 the the things you you've kind of set in place for your services are are pretty high end, you know what I mean. So hats off to you, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Try, trying to keep that high end look and that high end class and play with the high end cars. Hopefully, if they just keep spending money. Absolutely. Speaking of high end cars, dude, I, I want I want to talk about that Murcielago you had on. No, oh. dude. Yep. That was like I was like, holy shit! You don't get that every day. No, that was uh, that was a work in progress uh, to get into the shop. It definitely took me a, a fighting battle to get it into my shop because I've known the owner for a little bit, and he had a white one previously, and Unfortunately, uh, it, it didn't stay around very long because he ended up crashing it. But then he turned around and bought this gray one. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, we should wrap it. Because he was like, I kind of want it white again. But then again, I kind of want to go crazier. Because he's gotten into this position where he's like, I got to be flashy yeah. style. Yeah. Because you know, he's got that. And he's got a Diablo. And he's got a Maserati. And his daily driver is a Prius. Fucking A. <laughs> Jesus <Right>? Christ. <laughs> but it, it took me a little bit. I, I I went back and forth with him. I was like, hey, man, like, I'd love to do this car. I'd love to get in the shop. I'm like, I I really want to use it for advertising and marketing to really push us and, and the car scene, but also, you know, in general to say, hey, we play with high-end cars. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll touch it. Right. You know? He's like, yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I thought about it. And he went back and forth and I was like, I gave him a price. He's like, yeah, that's too much. I was like, okay. So I, I worked with him a little bit, you know, and gave him a, a little discount just to basically get it in the door. Yeah. Like the moment's in my door, I don't have to complain anymore. And he's like, I really want the door jams done too. I was like, well, you can kind of go F off because I really don't want to do those jams, but 
I'll do them anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows your skill at the end of the day, bro. Like I saw the I saw the video and I'm just like, holy shit! Like inside and out, just completely covered. I I just it's not an easy install, nonetheless. It it was definitely not an easy install at all. I, I stared at the car saying, okay, how am I going to do this? What did I get myself into? And am I really sure I'm up for this one? Yeah. And See what the, happens when the, you got it through your door? <laughs> now, you, right? now, you, now you just wanted to get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it was going, too. I was like, oh, God, I, I, I can't break anything on this because this is uh, – I'm not going to have business anymore and – yeah, I got I got paid for really expensive parts and right, you know, right. I'm over the corner like eating my teeth or eating my nails off my fingers. Like, oh, oh shit! My <laughs> god! But it, it was it was interesting. I was like, all right, we can do door jams, but if you want perfect door jams, honestly, these doors are supposed to come off. He's like, nope, you ain't bringing pulling the door doors off. I was like. Okay, now you're going to make this even more difficult on me. Mm. I was like, okay, well, I'll try to do it. Because he was very adamant about not pulling the doors off. He's like, those things are like 200, 400 pounds heavy. They're a nightmare to put on and off, and especially if you don't get them lined up right. I was like, good answer. Not yep. pulling them off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Because on his last one, the strut went out on the door so he had to like tie the door to the rafters in his garage just to take the strut off since it was so heavy on the door itself oh my god to put god. a new strut on i was like yeah never mind i don't want to pull these off no no <laughs> that's too shop. much too much of a liability <laughs> i was like nope so i literally looked at the car i was like okay i could pull these parts off but i really don't want to break anything so I literally left the whole car together. The only pieces I pulled off was the emblems on the front and the back and the uh, plastic grills in the front and the rear bumpers. Everything else stayed on. Wow. I cut holes, wrapped around everything, and pieced and seamed it all in together on body lines and made it work without pulling anything off. Jeez. How many hours did you have in that thing? Um... I had an easy two to three days on just the jams by themselves. And I did inside the jam. I went all the way, like the whole inside jam. I did the whole inside of the door. And I didn't even pull the door cover off or the door card off. I left it on. Oh, my God. So you had to wrap it with the door open all underneath uh -huh. up until the door panel? Uh-huh. Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, yeah. Piece for piece for piece. And the only thing I had on my side was a week or two before that, I was at a car show in Seattle. And there's a shop up there um, that I, I've talked to over the last couple of years. But they had a Mercy logo there that they had wrapped. Mm -hmm. But it was a, a convertible one, not um, not a hard top like what ours was. Right. So I was like, okay, and I looked at how they wrapped it. I'm like, okay, that quality standard is not mine. I'm not doing it that way, but I'll take ideas of where they put certain seam lines. And I was like, okay, we'll work with we'll work with that a little bit. Yeah. So when I got to mine, I was like, okay, this is where we're going to put a seam line. We're not going to do it like that. We're going to throw an extra piece here instead because that will look better in the end. And yeah, it was it was piece for piece on the door jams and the whole inside of the door and everything. It was a nightmare. <laughs> Did you use a lot of knifeless? Um, to be honest, I cut a lot of it, hand cut a lot of it, and a lot of that was because of where certain seam lines went. Um, trying to put knifeless in a you know say a recessed corner was pretty difficult to get it to go straight enough. I mean, I used knifeless where I could, but a lot of it actually came off of my knife skills. You know, I've, I've practiced and practiced. I'm not going to cut this car, though. <laughs> right. So, you know, I, I definitely, I was very, very light on it. I went and literally tore off every piece instead of like, oh, it fall right off because I went deep enough. No, yeah. this was like, 
I'm scoring it just a hair, just enough to yank it off. Yep. <laughs> kind of, kind of putting your PPF skills to kind of the rap game. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. that's, you know, it, yeah, it, it was a definitely a nightmare with not being able to pull the doors off and not pull door cards off. And yeah. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> you, you know what? You got it in the shot. You got it done. You, you nailed it. You know what I mean? Now, now it's out there and. Have you have you gotten work from it now? I've gotten some work from it, um, not as much as I wanted, only because um, we haven't really been able to advertise and market the way I wanted to, and that was a lot on the owner was just too excited to have his car back, and my schedule being super busy, and my media guys being super busy, we never actually truly got end results outside of the shop with the car. Mm. And during the whole thing, when the car was here, he wanted it black and white. And I was like, okay, well, that kind of hinders what I was trying to do, but oh well. So we tried shooting some footage of it while I was in the shop, but like the process. And we did a lot of time lapse on that one. Yeah. Only because of how long I was working on certain sections. Right. Uh, but we haven't been able to actually get with the car outside of the shop to go really shoot it in the wild and get like in sun photos and in sun video and the schedules just haven't worked out so we haven't really gotten what we wanted from it so it's kind of bittersweet and now it's winter time so there's no that thing. <laughs> sun and there's rain everywhere <laughs> yeah that that thing ain't coming out till spring now yeah unfortunately so it's it's a bittersweet thing i mean oh well it works would you have done anything different as far as like trying to get it in and use that as your marketing campaign so to say um i would have been a little bit more forceful with my foot down on we're gonna shoot this car here we're gonna shoot this car then we're gonna you know put specific times uh, places and everything and actually put ourselves in a position to get what we needed to Mm mm-hmm um, other than that, I mean, just being more, I mean, the whole, we were going to shoot it all in color and everything and release it throughout the whole week as we were working on it. And the moment that all changed to we're doing black and white only because that's what the customer wanted was the moment that like the whole environment went down like 10 notches and everybody's like, yep, cool. And we never really focused on it as hard as we were supposed to. It deflated your bubble. Yeah, unfortunately. So, like, my media guy was like, well, that kind of blows for everything I have in mind for media and video. And, like, well, oh, well, let's just try to capture something. And I think since he was so down on not being able to show it, he's like, well, I'm not really getting everything I'm supposed to be capturing. So I think, I think that was part of our problem, too. Yeah, I mean, you, you you work on a deal with them. He's paying a little bit, maybe not as much as he was supposed to. But at the end of the day, this is for you to work out for uh, some type of campaign or some type of, you know, cinematics mm-hmm. to show the quality of work that you can push out of the shop. And that's it's a fucking gamble, you know, when yeah. you when you're doing those types of high end jobs and trying to use them for marketing especially being so new in the industry it's kind of like oh fuck like right probably could have done four cars you know yep and, and did cinematics and blew that out of the out of the water and got way more out of that than just putting all your eggs in one basket you know yeah and that was that was kind of the bittersweet problem too on it you know mm-hmm. but oh well you live, I mean, you live, I'll you still learn. figure it out. I'll find more. So <laughs> that's it, dude. I mean, let's let's talk about some other like cool projects you had going on. What what like what do you think the hardest project you've done to date, other than the Lambo? Um, projects you've done, you know, were, were pretty <laughs> like. I can think of one that Which I saw. One? I was gonna say the WRX. Yep. The fucking that was, unicorn. That one. is my nightmare wrap, man. Let's talk about that, like, dude. Let's... I have I have nightmares over that wrap <laughs> over the Mercy Lago. Like, really? Oh my gosh! Really? Yes. It's it's yes. your fucking it's your fucking Freddy Krueger, huh? It just comes... oh my god! 
comes yes. and gets you when you're fucking <laughs> dead asleep. Oh, all right. Well, what oh, the fuck? Where do I start on that the, okay, one? so l- let me ask, what the fuck media was that? Like, <laughs> start that off with was, that. Uh, that was tech rap calendar film. Calendar. Guys, are past. you guys are you hearing calendar that? Calendar film. Calendared film. <laughs> like, holy hey. shit. <laughs> oh my god, that rap was a nightmare. So, okay. <laughs> I had this girl hit me up. She's like, hey, I want to wrap my Subaru, the Oregon Subaru Club. Sent me over to you. They said you do really good work. I was like, okay, cool. Like, what do you want to wrap your car in? And she sends me a couple pictures over media or Facebook. And she, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, that's a, that's a pretty cool chrome color. And she's like, yeah. Like, I, I really want that color. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you should come down to the shop. I'll check out your car. We'll look it over. We'll look at colors. I'll explain what we can do, what we can't do, and go from there. And she's like, okay, cool. And I I went through the color books, and I was like, no, oh, there's nothing really close to this color that she wants. So I go to my scrap pile of material from, like, all our stickers and whatnot, and I find this chrome unicorn looking color that i bought in from the local store for stickers and i was like okay perfect maybe this is you know something and i i looked up more and i was like oh, i found this tech wrap and i was like oh there we go that's the color mm. perfect they make it in wide enough rolls i can wrap the car with it didn't even think twice to really look at it see if it was calendar or cast and i she came in, I showed her the color, I was like, here you go, and here's the color from the wrap material, and she's like, perfect, that's the color I want. I was like, okay, like it's chrome, and it's holographic, and I have to do it a certain direction, she's like, okay, that's fine. I was like, so it's this much more than a regular wrap, she's like, cool. They even bat an eye on me. Wow. And she's like, let me know when you want to do it. I was like, okay, I need a deposit and we need to get the material ordered and then go from there and we'll get your car. And she's like, cool. Gave me a deposit and left. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I ordered the material. I get it in the shop. I'm like, all right, cool. Materials here. Let's get your car in and everything. And we got our car in, brings it down and we start tearing it apart. We open up the box of material and really start playing with it. I'm like, this this looks badass. Like this is gonna be crazy wild on the scar, but this is gonna be pre- pretty badass. I literally took a piece. I was like, "All right, we're ready. We're gonna wrap." I go to cut the fender uh, material to go wrap the fender. I'm like, "All right, perfect." The Dover X's on the new 15 plus cars have a partial fender. The bottom portion on the uh, towards the the wheel, the bottom of the wheel is a separate piece. So it's it's right. only like thirty inches by like twenty five max, mm-hmm. you know, twenty max. But it's got a lot of like different curvature recess area. Right. I'm like, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna slap this panel on and we're gonna see how this works and test it out from here. I literally take the material and I slap it. I go to go put it on the the edge and I define my edge of the body line. And then I go to, we'll work it in the recess and work it around the other corner. Well, the material was so strong. I literally went to go take a heat gun to it and it didn't stretch. (laughs) I'm like, okay, that's not a good feeling. And I took, I took a torch previously to the material to see how much heat I could really put to it. Cause usually we're using torches in the shop. Right. Just because of the efficiency. Right. And I was like, nope, that's going to burn it too much. We need a heater or a heat gun. So we use the heat gun. We're heating up and it doesn't really stretch at all. I'm like, great. Grab the IR heater, guys. Let's go. And this time I had me, my wife. I had my wrap guy. I even had. I think my designer at the same time and my media guy all there at the same time were five of us chilling, trying to wrap this fender. We got the heat gun on it. We got the IR heater running on it. 
and three guys pulling and I'm trying to squeeze you at the same time as I'm spraying water on top of the chrome so we don't scratch it. Right. It didn't stretch and didn't want to do anything. So I ripped it right back out. I was like, cool guys, we're done. We're not doing this anymore. Wow. <laughs> it's like the material doesn't want to go down. It like, it would leave like bubbles and I could lift it back up and squeeze them out and we'd be fine. But the moment I tried to put it in any recess, it didn't want to go there. And then like it would give me a crease line and that crease line, even with a heat gun lifting it back up and getting, you know, the material in the air and trying to heat gun it, the crease wouldn't go away. I was like, cool. Crease is in there forever. Wow. <laughs> it's not going nowhere now. I cannot, I cannot imagine what, what you felt like realizing that, oh shit, we got a roll of film. We can't fucking use it. Yeah. What's going to happen? So, now? so the next moment I was like, all right, you know what? Screw you guys. Let's try to seam this in. We'll put a seam line here at the body line. We'll play with trying to just play with flat panels as much as possible. Um, and I put a seam line in the middle of the fender on the body line. And basically did the top portion and the bottom portion of the fender in two pieces. Wow. With a crease line in the middle of it. And I was like, well, we've gone through enough material. I don't know if we're going to have, like, it's already a smaller roll because tech wrap doesn't give you a 75 foot roll. They only give you like a 50 or something like that. Jesus. So I'm like, uh, we're already short, um, on not having enough room for screw ups. So I call up my customer. I'm like, Hey, like, I got your car here, as you know. I've started playing with the wrap, but I need you to come down here real quick. And she's like, what's going on? I was like, I just, honestly, I just need you to come down to the shop, please. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, well, I guess I'll be there in a minute. She finally walks in the door, says hello, walks towards the car, goes to the driver's side where the car, the color's at, looks at it, starts freaking the hell out, and she says, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And she's literally screaming in the shop about how much she's in love with this color. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, so I know you love the color and all, but I'm not doing this rap. Like, I'm sorry, it's not happening. It's calendar material. It's cat, it's not cast material. It doesn't flex. It doesn't wrap around the car at all. Like, I literally, if I do this, I will possibly have these crease lines. Like, I left one in the wrap on purpose. Because we couldn't get it out, but so she could see it, I was like, "You're probably gonna have these crease, a couple of these crease lines on the wrap, and you're gonna have these seam lines everywhere." Right. And she's like, she looks at me and she's like, "I don't give a fuck what you gotta do. You're gonna make this happen." At that moment, I about fainted and fell over because <laughs> yeah, I was you tired were hoping, of working with five people. <laughs> you you were hoping you were out of that fucking deal. I was like, you don't. I was I I flat out told her I was like, you don't realize like it took us five people and forty five minutes just to get it down to that point. And right. she's like, I don't care what you gotta do. You got you're gonna wrap my whole car that color. Jesus I was like, Christ! Oh God, this is gonna be a nightmare. So so what so, wrapped, so what happened? <laughs> so we wrapped we wrapped I was like, whatever, alright. As long as you're alright with this and you're signing the, the liability contract, I don't care. Not anymore. Like this is on you now. And she's like, Cool. Wow. Fine with me. So I left that fender alone, went to another fender, started wrapping it. Pieced I pieced the shit out of the car. Because we couldn't get the material to go around anything. Jesus Christ. I mean, honestly, in the photographs, you can't even tell where the pieces are. But I could see where you left reveals of black and, like, accents of black where you couldn't get it to sit. You know what I mean? So that was one of the big things is, like, we could use <coughs> we could use satin black in in the design because she was willing to do that for like the roof wrap and stuff i was like let's put it elsewhere too yeah. in other areas yeah because this is gonna be a nightmare and so yeah if you look when you look at the picture of the car we every piece of the black was because we couldn't get the wrap to go that spot or it just technically flowed better that way yeah 
in the visual standpoint. And I was like, yep, this is where black's going. This is where black's going. This is where we're putting black, and this is where we're putting more black. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. You know, so it's like you look at the back bumper. There's one, two, three pieces just on the chrome. Jesus Christ. One for each side and one for the middle. So you pieced it that way. <laughs> We put a seam line vertically right in the corner of the bumper right before it makes the bend. That's crazy, dude. How Same long, thing on the front end, too. How long did it take <laughs> you to wrap the fucking thing? Um, seam lines with knifeless not really wanting to cut it right, which was another problem is none of the knifeless, depending on which styles we used, didn't want to cut the material. Mm-hmm. cleanly it wanted to frail the hell out of the edge even if you tried heating it to shrink it back up you know yeah it still frailed all the edges um so some of it i actually hand cut on the car um for the overlapping seams but said and done we were probably a good 40 to 50 hours into it maybe 80 if you count all the three people on each panel that we were working with. Yeah, all the man man hours on it Mm -hmm. and woman hours on it. Wow, dude. Have you ever put a seam line on a quarter panel? Fuck no. Neither have I until that wrap. Bro. (laughs) I'm dead serious. Dude, I, I, I fucking almost fainted the other day. I was driving on the highway and I seen a commercial truck driving by. And I know I've already said this on the podcast, but dude, mm-hmm. I saw a fucking seam in the middle of the door and a seam in the middle of the fender. <laughs> like, where the fuck are you profiling this shit? Who's like, <laughs> exactly. What do you got? Kids profiling this? Yeah, this looks good. <laughs> Let's just put a fucking seam in the middle of the door. What? Just put the whole fucking door. Like, <laughs> right? You're not saving that much material. Like, what no. the fuck? That shit drives me bat, that drives me batshit crazy. That's just, that's just somebody. Basically, what that shows me is that that's basically somebody that just hits a button. Mm-hmm. That's it. Somebody behind yeah. a computer hitting a fucking button. They don't give a yep. fuck where the seams are. They get the yep. whole side. And they say, okay, this this needs to be profiled 52 inches. It automatically gives you the 52 inches, the one inch overlaps, and they're yep. fucking printing it. Now, and, that, and that sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because when you got – 100%. Because when you got like a fleet of, of work, you know, 20 tr- – even tr- 20 trucks, whatever, yeah. or even one truck, whatever the case may fucking right. be. You don't put a fucking seam in the middle of the door. Like that just no. that, that is that no. to me is just not acceptable. Like that is just that will never fly at, as a norm ever, dude. Nope. No no fucking way. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> no fucking nope. way. But you know, in, in your predicament, you had no fucking choice. <laughs> I I literally had no choice. The yeah. customer gave me no choice at all. She paid me and paid me good, and still I didn't make as much money as I did, but the the, the experience behind it is what's made us better. And, and the best thing about that wrap, as much as it was a nightmare to do, the moment it left my shop, it got spotted four times from here to her house on the Facebook pages. Wow. And blew up on social media. See, you know, that would have been the one you you, you should have put your, all your eggs in one basket, even though it was a fuckery from the start to, <laughs> to, 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 to install, dude. But you get you get that one viral, mm-hmm. viral post. I think it's our second most viewed YouTube video. Really? Out of all the videos we have. Yeah. The only other one is the M4, which was totally put together well. Yeah, that but, M4 yeah. is nice too. <laughs> that that chrome wrap, man, that was the death of me. <laughs> now, is that thing still driving around now? How is it holding up? Have you seen it? That thing is still driving around now. To this day, it still gets spotted on all the pages at least once a week. Wow. Yep. And you're talking about big, big, big Facebook pages that are like, like we have specific Facebook pages here 
in like the Northwest mm-hmm. that are specifically spotted. Like, oh, spotted, and they take a picture of that car, spot it, and put it on that post. Like, post a picture of that whatever they saw on the road. Wow. And then everybody else comments and he goes, oh, whatever. Oh, oh, that's this person or yada, yada. Like, she has become well known for just her car in the Northwest, or at least in the Portland area. That's so funny. Everybody knows her car. Well, you know what? She's probably going to come back to do something even crazier. And you're going to have to Mm -hmm. fucking do your research and make sure you get that cat, that, that, that cast material the second time. I'm really around. worried about that part on how that's going to come off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm like, um, that's, I'm paying someone else to do that. <laughs> it is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like our personal, our Subaru, the design we just did with ours. I mean, we did a whole bunch of embossing underneath of it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not pulling this one off myself. I'm paying someone. Yeah. When you got the regular embossing underneath, that's just <clears throat> usually calendared <clears throat> media. Uh, sticker. 651. 651. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you don't want to be peeling yeah. that off. <laughs> nope. And it's, it's our tailored T logo in like three inch, uh, T's. So you're talking about thin lines everywhere. Yep. To try to pull up. Like, yep, nope. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather I pay somebody. i this one off myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's hilarious. Hey, kids, you want to make a couple dollars today? Right. Here's, <laughs> here's a plastic razor blade. Don't cut yourself. All right? And, uh, <laughs> right? Here's a heat gun. Don't put it directly on the paint for too long. And go ham. Yeah. Exactly. Go ham. That is so funny. That is so funny. Well, I want to talk a little bit about um, some tools that you, mm-hmm. you know, carry in your tool bag and, and what, what you carry in your arsenal. What type of tools are you using uh, to wrap? To wrap? So in my pouch, I usually have a five blade uh, NT cutter style cut uh, blade. Mm-hmm. And then I'm running a red Avery squeegee, a blue Avery squeegee. Um, red Avery squeegee, I just used a standard monkey strip on. And then the blue one, I run a banana buffer and a monkey strip on. Nice. One on each side. And then the, I have a geek wraps white, uh, just one of their common fancy ones. Yeah. With the black, the black, uh, yeah, the black felt felt. Yep. Yep. And then the hard edge. Um, and then I have a, I don't know what brand it is. It's the green, um, hard edge, double edge, um, like quick blade or whatever they call it. I don't even know what they call it anymore. Who makes it? Do you know? I don't remember off the top of my head. I can figure that out. Is, is it a squeegee? Yeah, it's a squeegee. Um, I don't remember. Pro Tools. Ah, Pro Tools. Yeah, I'm, I'm running those, and then I'm running their, the Avery Flex Screams in mine, a red and a blue one. I'm actually running two red ones and a blue one. Nice. It's easier that way, so I need to get in the seals and whatnot. Yep, yep. Do you, you, know? do you get into, like, the tuck tools and stuff? As well? Uh, I actually got a full set of the uh, Yellow Tools ones. Nice. They're 15 fancy special tuck tools. Yep. Oh, they come in that little case. Yep. Yep. I got one of those sitting on the, the tool cart. Nice. And then, you know, those, those come in handy for certain little jobs, depending on what I'm working on. Usually I can get most of it with just what's in my pouch. Right. But just kind of depends. Say like I'm trying to get around the the edge of the between the fender and the door. I'm usually using like uh um uh the 90 degree style uh tuck tool from the yellow tools bag. Yeah. Yeah, the little, little orange one. Mhm. Yep. Correct. Yep. Yep. I was going to say what yeah. type of pou- what type of pouch you run and you run just like a standard 
Home Depot style pouch that you got, or you you, you Home carry. Depot style for sure. Yeah, dude, a little fucking yeah. fifteen dollars special. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> hey, that thing that thing's you know it's it's nice. It hooks onto the belt, stays out of the way for the most part, and holds right. all the tools I need. So right, right. I'll tell you, bro. I I just um er, Ernie just sent me the uh Pro Yellow Tools pouch. Um, mm. the one that kind of folds over. Yeah. So your stuff doesn't fall out. Cause that's, to me, that's in it, like, that's a necessity for me because if I don't put my pouch, cause it doesn't fit in my box that I have. Like I have all my cleaning shit in, in my, in there and then like all my extra buffers and tuck tools and shit in there. And I can't fit my pouch in there. And if I do, Everything I have in it is fucking falling out. It drives me crazy. And then half the time I'm t- taking everything out of my box and fucking grabbing all my shit at the bottom of the box to put back in. Mm-hmm. And this yep. thing just folds over, dude, and nothing <clears throat> falls out. It's like crazy. Like, like for me, ease, you, you fucking fold it over. You got the clip, you clip it on, or you can, it's got like a, um, like a, like a button on it where you can put it around your, uh, your belt where it's a mm. little bit more secure over the clip. Nice. Dude, it's super cool. And on top of that, I bought the magnetic wrist, um, squeegee one. Well, it's the band that goes around your no, wrist. The band. Yeah. Dude. What a fucking time saver, bro. Like <laughs> half the time, you know, you got to put your, your your blade down into your pouch, whatnot. Dude, having your yep. blade up on your wrist or having like a, a specific – because a lot of the tools that Yellow Tools has, has that magnetic piece yeah. in it. So it's – you put it on the car, you put it on your belt, whatever the case may be. Dude, just having like your normal shit that you always constantly – your go-tos – your blade, yeah. maybe a tuck tool, just right there where you don't have to look down. It's always like at hand's reach. Mm-hmm. Changed my life. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's so weird because now it's it's become like a lot of people are starting to kind of pick up this trend where it's like a, this wrist style uh, getting away from the pouch and being minimalist. And having yeah. these little sections where you could put all your tools on your wrist and kind of yeah. like when you, when you go to like sit down on the floor, your pouch isn't spilling out and now you got to pick everything right. back up. It's, it's, you know what it is. You get up, you get down. It's fucking, oh, yeah. that's all we do all day. You know what I mean? So to have everything that, on a magnet changed my life, man. That that's actually why I just invested in a lift. <laughs> oh, see, you work smarter, not harder. Uh huh. See, exactly. you fucking press a button. You don't get up for sh- you don't get up to get down for shit. Yeah. Well, no, I, I I bought it mostly for the PPF side though, so we can get the cars off the ground and more in the air and closer to our our like you know chair rolling around size because. Right. I'm not going to want to sit down on the floor in the wet puddle and, you know, get soaking wet. You're so, right. You're right. You know, I'll, I'll put it in the air and do all my PPF in the air instead. And it actually will help out a lot when we're doing wrapping too. So. Oh, hundred percent. Definitely one way to not be on the ground anymore. Yeah. What do you drive right onto it and it just picks it up? Uh, it's one of the, I don't even remember what brand it is, but it's, it's one of the like, uh, ground level, um, post style. So it's, it, you drive over the top of it and then swing the arms out. And oh, it yeah. It matches up with the, the lifting points. Yep. Yep. Or yep. So it's a normal, if I'm it's a normal lift. car. Then use race ramps. Yeah. There you so. go. There you go. <laughs> That's cool. But. Yeah, dude. It's, it's, it's funny watching this, like the automotive side of it, you know, fall in where people are using more lifts and, things of that mm-hmm. nature at their shops where it's you know a lot of us you know you're pretty young still you know a lot of us in our <laughs> late 30s early 40s don't want to get up and down anymore the knees don't work as good right. you know what i mean so um the ease of well, that's seeing definitely me myself too i'm i'm 26 but 
I have a bad knee because of a motorcycle accident back when I was like 19 or 20 or something like that. No shit. So I, I definitely understand the, the old don't want to go up and down anymore. <laughs> yeah. So you, <laughs> you get the struggle, bro. You get it. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. I pulled my, um, my meniscus. I used to, oh, I used to, yep. I used to run a lot. Dude, you want to fucking feel pain? That shit mm-hmm. sucks, dude. Like that's actually what I pulled. Bone on bone, bro. Like, yep. Sh- that has got to oh, be yeah. like, and it's funny. It uh, only it it will only flare up if you turn a certain way. It's like it, uh-huh. it like if you just bend down the total wrong way, you literally can't walk for days. It sucks. Uh huh. I gotta wear a knee oh, brace. Yeah. Do, you, do you get you get that a lot still? So far, the knee brace part, I haven't yet. And, and I hate myself sometimes because when I worked at my welding job, I was on my knees checking stuff on the floor all the time because we had to weld on the floor. We had to weld above. Yeah. And going down and checking everybody's work on my knees. Oh yeah. Uh, my knees got a killer one and I didn't, I was not good at wearing knee pads and I can definitely feel it more and more because I used to play soccer all my life. So. You know, the athletic body stops playing soccer anymore in the last eight years and you start decrepting. Yeah. You know? I hear you, dude. So you play, you played soccer for a long time. I'm a big soccer fan myself. Yeah. I, I basically was playing soccer since the moment I popped out my mama. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Run the soccer, the soccer <laughs> kind of runs deep in the family. Oh yeah, my my dad was basically a coach of mine through all the way through high school, honestly. Wow. And then I went off to go try to play college ball and uh was good enough to play, but the coach on the other hand decided to choose other guys instead only because they had scholarship money and I didn't because I didn't need it. Wow. Yep. So he couldn't turn them down because they had scholarship money. Jesus. Yep. So that so I say, like, cool. Never mind. Forget you guys. <laughs> Fuck. So that was the end of that. <clears throat> yep. That was the end of my soccer career. I was like, never mind. Holy so once in a while, I'll go play with like the buddies and stuff. But I haven't played since I think I think you, nowadays I'm like, all right, it's holidays. Everybody's coming in for Christmas. Let's go play futsal now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know? you play, you play, you try playing indoor. Yeah, Dude. I played indoor. I played outdoor. I mean, I've Fuck, done it all. <laughs> fucking indoor is a monster, bro. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I played indoor. Probably, I played. I played uh, like traveling, you know, for mm-hmm. for my city and and for like shit like that. When I was young, I played for about. I don't know, maybe like eight, eight or nine years, give or take, I played. And then, uh, and then I got, you know, then I stopped with the high school, you know, did that whole thing and just mm-hmm. never really played after that. And recently, probably about three years ago, I got back into playing like indoor. And dude, you don't know how out of shape you are until you play a fucking, a, a three minute fucking indoor soccer game. Uh-huh. Like, I was fucking yep. breathing heavy, fucking cramps. I'm like, dude, I'm tapping out. Somebody's got to come in. Like, I, like, we had five minute shifts where we would switch out. I couldn't even do five minutes, bro. It's like <laughs> too much fucking back and forth. Holy yep. shit. Like, you can, I could not keep up with these kids. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing circles around me. I mean, when I got the ball, I could I could get around them pretty good, but I couldn't get down the yep. field like they were. Holy no. shit. See, and that's the funny part, too, is because, like, right next door to my shop, because we're in a big old warehouse. Like, the guy that bought the warehouse turned into a flex space. Yeah. And one of the businesses directly on the other side of the wall for me is a CrossFit. And they keep bugging me. They're like, oh, you got to come work out like you were a soccer player and all. I'm like, yeah, but I, yeah, I know. <laughs> Shit, yeah. Shit don't work like it used to, buddy. <laughs> I'm like, do you know how much it costs to be in here? Mm. They're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Do you know how much money I'm making? Not a goddamn dollar. Yeah. I can't come over there yet. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. They're always bugging me over it. 
Wait, uh, give yourself another ten years, dude. Give yourself another yeah. ten years, and you, you'll you'll see what it's like. Ten years. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a long time, but bro, it changed my it's life. A long time. Yeah, dude. <laughs> as soon as you turn 35, 36, bro, it's like holy shit. Okay, I gotta calm down. So I laugh at my dad because uh, he was like that all the way up to like 32, 35 too. And then, you know, I, I went out of high school and my brother was still in high school. So he's still coaching the high school team and, you know, dealing with that. And he's still coaching them, but he definitely can't run around the field like he used to. He's like, yep, yeah, mm, nope, not. You guys keep running. I'll stay over here. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Smart. Smart man right there. Smart man. Yeah. That is so funny, dude. Ah, uh, soccer! Hilarious. My God, <laughs> fucking! It's it's funny. Like a lot of us have different different things we kind of like go to after. Like mm-hmm. like a lot of us have different lives. You know, we all yeah. have the same rap rap industry people, and yep. and we love the industry. But then we have like some people like to go hiking, some people like to go boating, some people like to play mm-hmm. soccer, and it's it's cool to hear like. Other than the rap industry we have in common, like other people have other things in common outside of the industry, which is nice. Yep. You know? Exactly. And that's what makes us human though too, Oh, which is cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, and I always talk about wellness and healthy and it's yeah. always good to get out and do, be able to do those other things too, because it gives you a time to recharge and reset your, your, your mind away from always thinking about the business. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. That was the biggest reason why I did indoor because I was fucking so buried in work. I'm just like, mm-hmm. I don't do anything for myself. Let me let me get, you know, let me get with the guys one hour, mm-hmm. one day a week, yep. commit to that. And, dude, I'll tell you, an hour flew by quick and I wanted to go more, but it's just uh-huh. – like it was just nice to just like not think about anything and just focus on what I was doing at that moment. Yeah, that that's what I'm waiting for this Sunday because I I saw my buddies were in town and they were going to futsal la- this last Sunday. I was like, okay, what time is it? I guess I gotta come out now. <laughs> that's funny. Yep. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, oh, this is gonna be so much fun, but I'm gonna hate my life the next Monday. <laughs> you know what? You 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 do it once in a while, and and you know. Those those moments, you can you only get those things one time. Like that's it, yep. and that's and and that's what a lot of people you know have to realize. Like take advantage of the time you have because mm-hmm. tomorrow that's it. Like tomorrow was yep. yesterday, and then that you can't get that back. You can't get that time back. So when you got friends in town and stuff, take advantage. Fuck the work's gonna be there tomorrow. You know what I mean? Absolutely, and that's. That's definitely one thing I've been learning a lot, <laughs> at least finally catching on to, is the work's going to be here tomorrow. We'll be all right. Right. And my right. wife's like, who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm, like I'm, a, I'm this new guy, you know? I, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, this, this guy, your husband, at least the last I understood. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's funny. You know? And we're having a kid in February now, so I'm like, yep, it's time to make changes. No more of this, no more of that. So, oh, dude, congrats. That's awesome. Is this going to be your first child? Yeah, that's the scary part of it all. <laughs> yeah, you got to start fresh and not get into something you're not, you know, that's so foreign to you. Yeah. No, that's that's the crazy part is like, uh, what do I do? How do I do this? Uh, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? You oh, know? dude, you, you'll honestly, you know, it's it's funny. You hear stories about like, oh, I don't think I'm ever going to be ready. And, you know, mm-hmm. how do I know if I'm ready? Bro, I'm telling you, do you know what you're having? Uh, we don't. It's a girl or a boy. It's a healthy, happy baby. That's all that matters. Nice. So you guys are going to find out when the, when the babies do. Yep. Wow. When it pops props. out is when we find out. Fucking props to you guys. I could <laughs> not wait nine months for that. Holy shit. That's we crazy. waited nine weeks to not know at all and find out randomly when she got in a car accident and uh, had to go in because she got in a little fender bender. And she's like, yeah, my back still hurts. I'm like, okay, time to take you in. Yeah. And we go in the hospital and, you know, I'm waiting in the waiting room to go take her vitals and stuff. Well, they take her in the back from there. I'm like, okay. 
you know, thinking it's like, what's taking this get this person so long to get her back out here? And she's like finally talking back and forth and sending me text messages. And she's like, okay, I want you back here. So I go to back, finally get to the back where she's at. And I walk in, say hi to her, say a couple words. And the doctor comes out, grabs her and takes her in the back behind the door. I'm like, what the hell is going on now? Like something bad is something wrong. Like, I don't know. Wow. And the wife comes out with a box of tissues and crying. She's like, uh, I'm pregnant. I'm like, bullshit you are. Yeah. You know, From who? We, we haven't been trying to have you pregnant <laughs> ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not ready. Holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> who impregnated you? Could yeah, have been exactly. Me. Who, who, who's the kid you're having? Cause I didn't do nothing. That's so <laughs> funny, dude. <laughs> That is so funny. I'm telling you, bro, like, no matter what, you're never going to be 100% ready. No. But I could tell you, dude, and not to spoil the moment or the beans because you'll know. As soon as you hold that baby, bro, you'll get it. It will literally come to you as if it was like a light. You know what I mean? Right. I believe, Believe me. That's the same thing I tell people when they ask that that simple question when is the time ready yeah to move on and go full time for your business right you'll know you'll know right when it is do you think it is now or later are you sure you're 100 percent now no i'm not sure okay then maybe you're not ready yet you know but the only thing you won't know is you won't know if you're ready or not until you actually make that leap exactly and until then you're going to be in limbo yep and and there's nothing worse than being in limbo Yep. That anxiety of what you could potentially do and that time you take in, in limbo. Mm-hmm. Like, don't let that There's shit. The time that you could grown. Yes. Yeah. Faster, dude. harder. Dude, yep. I've seen, dude, I've seen people in limbo for a whole fucking year. It's like, yep. dude, what are you waiting for? Just do it. You could have been a year ahead if you yep. didn't, if you didn't overthink it, you know? Yep. People overthink things too much and they're afraid of change. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, That's you get number one thing. To you it. get complacent. You get you get you know comfortable, and mm-hmm. you fall into. That's a lot of the fucking. Honestly, that's a lot. That's a big part of you know life. A lot of people just yeah. get stuck and never do anything more or anything less, and they're totally fine for where they are and what they're doing, and. Mm-hmm. You know, by the time you get older, you realize, fuck, I should have did this or I had mm-hmm. time to do this. Why didn't I? It's it's regret. And there's nothing worse yep. than feeling like you you should have done something at that point. That regret, dude, that shit never goes away. I hear stories all nope. the time. Older people that I know that just like – Dude, take it uh, like as stupid as it sounds, and everybody always tells you when you're a kid, do what yep. makes you happy because you only get one time to do that. Yep, one time, hundred percent. You know, absolutely. So anybody that's listening out there that is wondering when the time is to move forward with either dipping your feet fully into the industry or or anything in life just fucking do it you know what i mean whether you fall on your face whether you succeed whether you don't succeed whatever the case may be at least you know that you tried mm-hmm. you know Sa- sadly i live by that send it rule <laughs> Sa- yeah send it absolutely absolutely it's and and, and you should sweet thing. it can give me a lot of trouble but it could do magical things to me and i would never know until the end result exactly exactly yep. you never know until you make that leap and fucking uh, i probably got like three or four stories of people i've talked to on instagram that you know now are realizing like wow my my only regret now was that i didn't do it sooner mhm you know and and I love yep. hearing that shit. It's like, yeah, dude, I'm telling you, it's so much better on the other side. Like you just gotta get yep. you gotta get up that hill. You just gotta dig your feet in and fucking make it up to the top of that hill because guaranteed by the time you get up, dude, and you get to see everything 
from up there, it's going to be way better. Way better. Yep, because then you're just going to hit the top and come down the roller coaster ride and go up and down. And, and that's, the, that's the fun way part. Right. Exactly. Exactly, yep. bro. Well, dude, I don't want to take up too too much of your time. I know we're running like two hours. It's gone super fast. Um, I like to end with this question is, who is yep. your biggest influencer, um, whether it be in the industry or not in the industry, um, in your life right now? Um, my biggest influencer would would probably be Gary Vaynerchuk, honestly. Nice. And uh, the reason why behind it is because he's not like he's real. He's straightforward with you. It tells you how it is. Doesn't sugarcoat a damn thing. Mm. And if you're going to fail, you're going to fail. Or if you're going to make it, you're going to make it, you know? Right. But it, you listen to him versus, you know, some other influence speakers or something. And he's, he's the one that doesn't have a problem with cussing. <laughs> I have, I'm in that industry where, or that, that environment throughout my whole life where cussing was just a second nature to me, you know? Yeah. And he's like, nope. Fuck it, send it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, okay, fuck it, send it. We're going. <laughs> you know? Definitely, definitely. So he, 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 I listen and watch a lot of his videos. I actually follow him quite often on his, his YouTube channel, but I think I've learned a lot of how to run my business and like a lot of like the techniques or like the actual business aspect of things and how to look at it from a business owner standpoint and not just an employee standpoint Mm -hmm. and how to make it better. Nice. You know? Yeah. I love Gary. He's, he's, he's like, (coughs) he's like the type of guy that drank, that looks like he drinks 20 cups of coffee first thing in the morning and then does a fucking YouTube channel. Right, <laughs> fucking miles an hour, dude. The, the guy's crazy. I love, I love watching his stuff. I was a wick. You know, it's funny. Like he's got this thing where, like, you know, people. I I heard an interview where he, he had mentioned he's like, you know, people will listen to me and watch me for quite a while, but mm-hmm. he's like, and then he, like, right after that, he's like, yeah, and then they stop watching me, and yep. it's and it's not, and it's not because. They're not intrigued in what I say, but they finally get it. They finally yep. understood what I was doing and what I was saying and took my advice. And it, it's, yep. it's funny. I used to watch him religiously, dude. Every day I bought the book, read the book. Like mm-hmm. I did everything. And then I just like took a little hiatus away from watching and listening. I, I still see a couple things here and there, but – like you, like you took away so much. I, I took away so much too. And I'm like, okay, I've had enough. Like, mm-hmm. cause it, it, it does get a little bit repetitive because he does yeah, hit definitely. a lot of, a lot of things like constantly the same thing. And he knows he'll gain followers and then he'll lose followers. But yep. at the same time, he respects the people that he's lost because he knows now yep. they've taken his, his advice and applying it. It, it's yep, it's like exactly. a fucked up way of thinking and kind of being somewhat of a mentor or some type of like um like industry person to kind of follow but like like it's fucking 100% true i couldn't believe it i'm like wow this dude's fucking got his he knows right you know, he built yeah, so much no, shit absolutely. from nothing and 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 now look at him like look at all the sh- the sh- like you think it day's busy this fucking guy like <laughs> he's got his hands yeah. in fucking everything dude it, it's yeah, de- no, it's definitely exactly. <laughs> worth work ethic this this guy's like always doing something to make a dollar mm-hmm. yep. you know yep and he shows you the most simplest easiest way to do it and then the most complicated way to do it, and you choose, you figure it out. Right, right. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I love Gary. That's that's a good one. I I love when people say it's, it's like Gary or some other influencer on like YouTube or podcasts and things of that nature. Because mm-hmm. it's I totally I totally understand where you're coming from. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Cool, dude. Anthony, complete pleasure having you on. Thanks, thanks again for just taking the time and. Sharing your experiences. I, I know it, you know, you're a few years in and 
and and rapping and you doing all the right things, getting certifications, doing research and creating this awesome brand, dude. And it's it, it's nice to sit and talk uh talk to somebody that brings a new light to the industry a little bit. Well, I appreciate it and it's my pleasure to be able to, you know, talk with you guys and you know, hang out and learn more th- cool things. Yeah. That's <laughs> what it's all about, you man. Know? Always learning. Exactly. Always if I'm learning. not learning still then I'm dead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you uh, I see it. Yeah, you learn something yeah. every day, dude. That's that's what that's life. Exactly. That's life. Unreal. Cool. So Anthony, uh let's end the show with uh letting everybody know where they could find you on social media if they want to contact you or follow you or follow your journey. Yeah, so uh Instagram and Facebook we're at Tailored Auto Tailored Auto Styling. And then uh YouTube as well. You can find us at Tailored Auto Styling too. Um and then just the standard Tailored Auto Styling dot com website, you know. Definitely. So easy peasy. Easy peasy. Lemon <laughs> squeezy. Love it. Exactly. Love it. Anthony, dude, complete pleasure having you on the show, bro. I uh I wish Thank you again. I wish you well for uh for for the rest of two thousand eighteen, brother. I appreciate it and I wish you as well too. What's up, everybody? Hope you enjoyed this episode of the All Wrapped Up Podcast. Hit that rank button and review. And to stay up to date with future podcasts, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, folks, that's a wrap.